there are three reasons why luxury brands burn stock. Hey everyone, I wanted to do another topical video and specifically this in this I'm going to talk to you about some of the um, unpleasant side of the fashion industry, including specifically things that the luxury side are doing that you wouldn't expect them to do. So this whole thing really, I guess awareness on what the fashion industry do with their leftover items that aren't sold really came to light back in 2018. And at the time, Burberry had just been kind of found out, if you like, for destroying $36.8 million worth of merchandise that hadn't sold. One thing I just thought of while editing this, and this, what I'm showing you here, is a, one of the many really good articles that I've got information from for this video. I will link to it below. But one thing I think is quite interesting to say, and this doesn't just go for the luxury brands, this goes for fast fashion as well, a lot of this, when I've read about it, is actually alleged. Uh, there are some, I mean, what company's going to want to admit to it? Uh, some of it seems that uh, the information from various companies, fast fashion as well as luxury, has actually come from people uh, blowing the whistle, but also some of it has come from people um, who know what they're doing, going through company annual reports and noting provisions for the for impaired inventory uh which could include damaged stuff but also unsold items so that's really where it's come from and i feel like that's really important to say i also really get the feeling that some of the speculation around why has come from brands that are open about it such as burberry in this video i am sharing some of those speculations with you but you might want to be open-minded about it read the articles and make your own decision so the trickle down effects from burberry were that there were more people looking at other brands to see who else might be doing the same thing and it's kind of to no surprise for most of us that a lot of the brands doing it are fast fashion brands so i think forever 21 were one of the brands h m nike urban outfitters but then the surprising thing there were brands like and i hope i pronounced this right richemont who are an umbrella company that own um, lots of very high-end uh, jewellery brands, including Cartier. So specifically as watches, and what they do is they kind of take them apart if they don't sell. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that, which I'll come on to in a second. But as I say, when you think about the workmanship that uh, and the time and the skill that's gone into making something, for it to be so disposable as to just burn it or take it apart or do whatever it feels quite quite shocking so the big question for me is what do they do with it i just imagine that they burn stuff it is actually quite a bit more complex than that so there are two things that brands will do to get rid of clothes the first is called ripping or shredding and that's what is focused on in that video that i'll put below so all of these shipping containers turn up apparently over a hundred thousand tons of new clothes were destroyed in the last year that is shocking if you think about how much does a t-shirt weigh how much does a pair of jeans weigh i think a range rover sport is one ton just imagine trying to pick up a range rover sport but it's just clothes and you can't physically lift it and then you have a hundred thousand of Range Rover Sports in clothes. That is a lot of clothes. Most of the stuff goes to a place in India and the village in question is called Panipat. When it gets there, you can see all the clothes here. I'm kind of showing some visuals. As I said, I'm gonna link this video below, but all of the clothes turn up, women and children, they take the clothes and they separate them into different piles and they separate them by color. All of those clothes then have to be ripped so that they cannot be taken from this particular place and sold outside of the uh outside of the factory so the clothes are purchased by 
the guy who owns the premises and he then gets money back by them recycling those clothes back into thread or back into fabric again. Here's the thing, you might think, well, at least it's being recycled. Yes, it is. But if you take into consideration the damage to the environment and the human impact of creating those clothes in the first place, actually turning them back into thread is a drop in the ocean compared to the damage that that's already done to the environment. And they have a series of things that they use to shred things with. They've got blades, they've got this kind of circular thing that I'm gonna show you here. Try to get some clear visuals. One thing that I found when I was watching this that was, that was quite um, sad to actually watch is some of the girls had found this white dress. One of them tried it on and it didn't matter how much they liked it or how cheap or expensive it was, you, they wouldn't have been allowed to have taken it. And so they had to kind of take the dress off and then go and slash it. And they took knives and they kind of cut through it so that it was ruined so that no one could take it out and wear it. So that's the first way. The second way is incineration. And a lot, from what I understand, a lot of the high-end brands do incineration. The problem with it is that you have smoke going into the atmosphere. Now, a lot of the brands, I think including Burberry, claim that they collect up that smoke and that that smoke, they do something good with it. I don't know what. When I think about the world that we live in today, I feel like everything has got really fast paced. Everything in the West, we want it quickly, whether it's our prime Amazon delivery, I want it tomorrow, if not today, by this evening, if possible. You go on your phone and you wanna book an Uber and you, it, it's all about how quickly it turns up. You go on to Just Eat and you order your takeaway food and you're sat there while I am and I'm looking at the clock on my phone and I'm like, when's it gonna be here? And the same thing also has happened with fashion and that's really how the fast fashion industries come about is I think when I researched this a while ago for a different video I, I did, there was a thing that said that a lot of fast fashion retailers kind of were born, if you like, around the year 2000. And that before that, you did have retailers that were less expensive, like Miss Selfridge, I think places like that. But they weren't first fast fashion in the sense of Zara or H&M or Primark. Why, are, why would luxury brands do this? Turns out there are a couple out of reasons. Now, first of all, I would like to think that luxury brands only make a finite amount of things, but if you take a bag, for example, and that they don't even have any left at the end of it. Clothing, I guess it might be a bit different if you are kind of dealing with loads of different sizes and you've got clothing left over, but certainly when it comes to bags and accessories, I'd like to think that they don't over make. And in fact, when you think about luxury and what makes luxury luxury, it's the quality, so you would think, it's the craftsmanship, so you would think, and it's also that exclusivity. It's luxury, I think, has changed over the years, where now you can walk into Chanel, let's say, if you were to go in there to buy a classic flap, there's no wait list most of the time, you can just go and buy it. That is that really luxury? Or actually, actually is a Hermes more luxury where you can't just go in and buy one? You have to build up a relationship to get one. You have to be added to the list. It feels a bit like expensive fast fashion. What do you think? Let me know. There are three reasons why luxury brands burn stock. The first reason is exclusivity. None of these brands, very few of them, some do do it, but most of these brands do not want their items to end up on sale. So if you take Chanel, for example, Chanel have two major sales a year. One is the first day back in January, first working day. And then the second one is at the end of June, beginning of July. Bags don't go on sale. Clothes do, some accessories do. Basically seasonal clothes and accessories go on sale. And on average, the discount is, it, from whenever I've been in, it's been like 40%. But then one, anything that doesn't sell, 
I don't know where that stuff goes. Does anyone? Well, it probably goes and gets burnt. They don't want people to think, well, I don't have to go and buy Chanel full price because it's gonna end up in an outlet somewhere. The second reason is to limit what they call the gray market. So the gray market is when, let's say, wherever you live, the pound, the British pound, is less than your currency. So you come here on holiday, you can go and buy Chanel with the currency conversion for less than it would be in your country. You then get a tax rebate on your way back out of the country, so you've saved yourself another 20%. You then get back to where you live and you can go and sell this item and make a profit on it. That is the gray market. And that's what a lot of these brands are trying to get on top of. They don't want there to be places in the world where you can buy their things for cheaper. And I know that Chanel definitely, I think in recent years, they've tried to adjust the prices by country so that you can't make a saving based on your currency, I think. And then the final reason, and this is the one that I really didn't like the most actually, the final reason why they do it, and it's to do with getting tax refunds as a brand. So if Chanel, let's say, if Chanel in the US import a load of stuff from Chanel, which is obviously in France, there are taxes to be paid, import taxes. So uh, a handbag imported per handbag is gonna have a tax on it anywhere between 16 and 60%. And the percentage of the tax is based on what that bag is made of. There's then 11% uh, paid on watches. Now, if at the end of the season, Chanel don't sell a load of stuff and they've already had their end of season sale and they've still got stuff left over. They can either sell that for a discount, which they're not going to, like a further discount, or if they burn it, they get a tax refund from the government. So if they've imported a coat and they've paid whatever percentage of tax on it, if they then go and, it, only if it's new, if they then go and burn it and give proof, they will get the tax back. So actually, this is a good way of, well, we've been left with stock, can't do anything with it anyway, because we're not gonna give it away and we're left with it. We can actually claim back some of our tax money by destroying it. Same thing in Italy as well. Apparently there are tax credits given to brands that do this. The problem is with that, with that one, with the tax, that to me suggests that it's almost encouraged and that it's obviously you don't want to end up with stuff left over at the end. But um, as I've spoken about in some videos before, if you take a bag from Chanel that's 3000, there's no way it costs them even 10% of that to have it made. So if you think about actually the cost of what this stuff costs them, probably the tax is more than what it's cost them. Because I would imagine they're going to be paying tax on retail. So actually thinking about it, if that's the case, then they're going to be making some nice money back. And it's just really weird that that would actually be encouraged. It's really um, not very nice. And I did also think, um, I can't remember if, if I said earlier, but I did also think how much nicer it would be if instead of chucking away loads of stuff and destroying it, if instead the brands just made fewer quantity, I think doing that would create more of a hype and more of an interest around things and it would make it feel more luxury but then it kind of comes back to this thing i was saying earlier which is how many of you feel as though luxury some brands maybe because of instagram or even youtube like look at how much i talk about this stuff it's almost become fast fashion luxury fast fashion so chanel can either make 10 classic flaps and they sell out and everyone's like, oh, I need one because you can't get them anymore. Or they can just overproduce so that they can keep up with demand. Actually, Classic Flap's a bad example because they can just roll it into the next season. It's mainly going to be seasonal items. So yeah, I just, I feel like why, they should just make less. I found some recent really good information and news about different countries trying to put a stop to this and this piece of news here is dated 2019 June and this is France's plans to outlaw the destruction of unsold consumer products 
by 2023. So it's a shame they can't do it sooner, but it's really good that it's on the horizon. Let me know what you think. What are, what are your thoughts on it? I think this topic is so uh, frustrating in a way because you've got all of this information out there by way of sort of sneaked video content and photos, but with no one really wanting to admit it, it's hard to categorically point the finger at the guilty parties. Anyway, let me know what you think below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.